So right now, our objective is to find a way to make the wave confined in the neighborhood of the certain x-axis, okay, so that it can represent the particle but vanish everywhere else. That's our objective. Right, the time independent potentials is given uh, by this, okay, for, I mean, the solution to the time independent potentials given by what we call as a stationary state. So right now, we can pick a solution. So let's just say we pick the solution e to the ikx. Now remember, e to the ikx is one of the solutions to the unbound states. Remember we talked about that? See the unbound states over here, and you know, like we say, they can't be norm uh, normalized, okay, so we need a way to really normalize it. Now, we can assist us in doing so by using the superposition principle. Alright, so if we were to write out the solutions of capital Psi uh, in full, we take one of these solutions given by this over here. This solution, I say again, is unphysical, but this superposition principle is the key in helping us making um, the wave function confined in a finite region. Now, when we do that, there's a certain term to, to, to say, you know, we are, what we're trying to do is we're trying to localize the wave function, okay? We're trying to localize this wave function over here. Alright, so what we're going to do is that we mathematically describe it as a Fourier transform, okay? Fourier transform is a term that many, that's new to many of you, but it's just a term to describe a process. What is the process? The process is this. Define a new function, which we call it as psi tilde, okay, in terms of x and t, is equals to 1 divided by square root 2 pi, we're going to integrate from minus infinity to infinity of another function, which we label as phi, Okay, in terms of another variable, which we label as k, right? So, okay, this, you have no idea what is it right now, but just uh, hold on a minute. But we're going to integrate this, okay, multiply that with a solution to the time-independent potential. So we write that as e i, okay, k x, knowing that k is here, minus e uh, t, sorry, e t divided by h bar, right? And we're going to integrate that with respect to k. Alright, this is what we call as a Fourier transform. Now, this function over here, okay, which is phi k, is called the am uh, amplitude of the wave packet. Amplitude of the wave packet. Now, the wave packet is essentially a localized wave function. So, all we wanted to do to begin with was to localize the wave function. When we localize that using the Fourier transform, we get what we call as the wave packet. Alright? So, now my objective to you is to explain those who do not do Fourier analysis what this Fourier transform is. I'm not going to do that because it's quite difficult, but what I can do is to draw the similarity of the Fourier transform with the superposition principle because that is at least what we can understand. Now, look at the superposition principle, right? A solution to the Schrodinger equation is given by we can multiply a certain constant to one of the solutions and we take the summation of that. This process is really taking all these solutions, okay, finding the certain um, constant that when we multiply them together, you know, it's constructively interfering in this neighborhood, which is called the classical trajectory, and it vanishes everywhere else. This is done by the Fourier transform. As you can see, the summation is over here, right? Okay, the summation now becomes the integral, okay? So minus uh, infinity infinity because we are taking all these uh, wave solutions. Now this psi n is given by the solution over here. There we go. So basically, this coefficient is now given by this function right here, the amplitude of the wave packet. Now, the only exception is basically this 2 pi. This 2 pi has something to do with the normalizing our constant, to make it normalized so that the probability is equal to 1. So that is all you need to know. Now, lastly, we can somehow consolidate what is this k over here and why am I integrating with respect to k, okay? That is quite a mystery, okay? Now, just look, uh, look again, you know, the solution is k, uh, k and x, the solution to showing the equation, but this amplitude of the wave packet, which is the localized wave function, uh, psi tilde, is given in terms of k. We need to go back to de Broglie's hypothesis, remember. Quantum mechanics, particles uh, shows particle behavior, wave-like behavior, right? So we need a way to encompass the two. Now, in a particle, okay, it is characterized by the energy and the momentum, okay? So if we know the energy and the momentum, we know it's really all about the particle. If for a wave, is called the wave vector and lambda, the wavelength. Now, the wave vector, we can just simply, you know, remove it as a vector because we're dealing with one-dimensional space, and this becomes what we call the wave number, okay? The wave number, okay? Just terms to call K. The wave number, by de Broglie's hypothesis, is linked by this equation over here, okay? K is equal to the momentum divided by h-bar, you know, the momentum of the particle. What do we know about the momentum of the particle? Momentum is equal to mv, correct? Now, we can write p squared is equal to m squared v squared, right? So, the momentum squared is equal to m squared v squared. Now, we can rearrange this to be m uh, v squared m, okay, 2 multiplied by half, right? 
So 2 multiplied by half multiplied by mv squared times n is the same thing as this over here. Now, and then finally, this would now become 2me. Okay, so as we can see over here, 2me. Momentum squared is equal to 2me. I take the square root, I get square root of 2me divided by h bar. This is the energy. And does this look vaguely familiar? This is actually the constant that we define to the solutions of the Schrodinger equation. So what we can see now, everything's falling, thing, falling into place. The wave number, okay, which is given in the solution over here, right, is someone link, linked to the energy by de Broglie's hypothesis. So we get the solutions, okay, we integrate them over the wave number, we're essentially integrating over the energy, the different energy, we we'll multiply that based on a certain amplitude of the wave packet. This amplitude of the wave packet becomes our our coefficient uh, that we're going to use multiplied by the function itself for our superposition principle and when we do all that okay the Fourier transform we will get finally a localized wave function which we call as the wave packet and this wave packet my friends can be used to define or can be used to represent the dynamics of the particle in the microscopic world Alright, what does all this mean? Because our first problem we're going to handle later is really the free particle, okay? And we need these uh, wave functions because by doing so, now, psi tilde, okay, has a physical meaning. The probability density of psi tilde squared has a physical meaning, right? And I, that is what I want to talk about all today, right? So this is finally, I think, our last lesson on really the, the physics, okay? And we're going to go into all the problems on, uh, later, okay? And the first one is the free particle. We need to use all these methods to really uh, solve the physical problems of quantum mechanics, all right? So hope, you know, you stick on the next lesson and see what we can learn. Thanks.